गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द व्यूअर्स वो वॉचिंग लाइफ एंड विल बी वॉचिंग ऑन द रिकॉर्डेड वर्शन आई होप यू आर एंजॉइंग दिस सी एम ईज एंड विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मोर टाइम लेस जस्ट जम्प ऑन टू आवर टूडेज टॉपिक विद अ थर्टी सेकेंड काउंट डाउन टाइम So we have to do with no charges and some problem, network problem. Let's wait for a few minutes. Ah, uh, sir, please hold on. Uh, I guess there are some network delays for uh, from from Doctor with no charges side. Please okay, okay. Let's just hold on for now. Okay. We are waiting for a few minutes. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening, all viewers. We are on the ninetieth version of online CME. Thank all our viewers, members, doctors, schools, and uh, beneficiaries of Holika across the globe. A uh, very happy Holika Dahan Day today. and tomorrow we'll be celebrating holi all over the world so uh, holi is a great festival for us in india and we are going to start tonight cme with our respected uh, president uh, dr tel kalani sir who happens to be moderated to have a very important and to Share with the CME and the topic, and uh, introduce our speaker tonight. We will call on our respected Dr. Sharma to inaugurate tonight's CME. Dr. Sharma, also if you can hear me, can you bring Dr. Pralay on screen? uh thank you so much uh, our respected uh, president of alumni association dr devnarayan kallani and uh, secretary dr bidud mukherjee uh today i stand here to inaugurate uh, today's cme and this cme happens to be a 90th cme and the topic of discussion right now is the lumbar spondylitis and i believe that we are all in pre a pre festive mood right now and uh, today to talk in on the subject we do have dr orga chatterjee 
he happens to be a very and a very scholar person in this respect to welcome all the viewer out here who are watching this program right now it is my privilege and honor to be inaugurator of today's program i will request dr orgo chatterjee uh, to start his program today is to start his seminar today uh, dr chatterjee here is your floor thank you so much Hello. Good Sorry. evening. Yes, Argo. This is your Good evening, floor. all. Thank you so much. Good evening, all. Uh, thank you again uh, to Dr. Kalyani sir for giving me this opportunity to present a little bit uh, something about lumbar spondylosis. I would first again would like to thank my teacher and my guide, Dr. Pralya Sharma sir. for guiding me through all the difficult times on my, of my life without further uh, wasting any time i would like to start today's topic uh, first of all i would like to wish everyone a happy holi for tomorrow and since uh, holi is a fe festival of colors and a festival of joy people everyone wants to dance around spread cheer of holi in this uh, scenario we will speak about lumbar spondylosis lumbar spondylosis is simple commonly known as lower back pain or lower back arthritis is a condition that affects the lower spine just give, let me start with the slides okay uh, so lumbar spondylosis is commonly known as lower back arthritis is a condition that affects the lower spine causing pain and discomfort so uh, as we are all doctors here we know about lumbar spondylosis more we get so many cases of lumbar spondylosis in our opd some of them with proper report some of them without any reports just came, coming in to the opd with a simple uh, problem of lower back pain now lumbar spondylosis can be caused by a number of factors out of which the first factors would be definitely age as we are aging as everyone starts aging all the muscles and bones start to wear and tear which causes uh, wear and tear of the spinal disc and injury to the spine which is the primary cause of lumbar spondylosis if we go to the types of lumbar spondylosis we can uh, know that lumbar spondylosis can manifest in different ways including degenerative disc disease spinal stenosis and facet joint osteoarthritis we will again go into the detail basically about disc degeneration now this type of lumbar spondylosis involves degeneration of the intervertebral disc of the which are basically soft cushions so whenever this kind of degeneration takes place the disc uh, the uh, disc space between two vertebras decreases and this uh, due to the loss of this disc height there is a decrease elasticity and formation of bulges or herniation the next point would be facet joint arthritis now this type of lumbar spondylosis can also result from degenerative disc changes in the facet joints which are the small joints that connect the vertebra facet joint arthritis or facet arthropathy can cause inflammation joint space narrowing bone spurs or osteophytes and stiffness of the affected joints the third one would be ligamentum flavum hypertrophy now let me just change the slide yeah the ligamentum flavum is a ligament that runs along the back of the vertebra vertebral canal providing stability to the spine in lumbar spondylosis the ligamentum flavum can thicken and become hypertrophic narrowing the spinal cord and compressing the spinal nerves just give me one second
I think I'm more, yeah. Yes. So uh, uh, the third topic we talked upon, the third type was ligamentum flabum arthropathy. And the last part, which is one of the most severe uh, forms of spinal means spondylosis, is foraminal stenosis. Lumbar spondylosis lead to foraminal stenosis, which is the narrowing of neural foramina. The neural foramina are what? Basically small openings between the vertebra through which the spinal nerves exit the spinal cord. Narrowing of these openings cause symptoms such as pain, numbness or weakness of the legs. So in this place, basically it's not just the lower back which is being affected, but also the, due to the spinal cord stenosis basically, this is causing numbness and pain in the legs as well. In fact, uh, in some uh, form, it is uh, basically causing a sciatica-like kind of pain. The next uh, one is spondylolysis. While spondylolysis is a separate condition, it can also be considered a type of lumbar spondylosis as it involves forward displacement of one vertebra over the, over the one below it. Basically, the uh, when the, whenever the uh, one vertebral disc is overlapping the other, and basically this causes degenerate due to degenerative changes in the vert intervertebral disc and facet joints. It's called spondylolysis. And in out of all this basic uh, lumbar spine spondylosis, spondylolysis are the ones which are very difficult to cure or very difficult to treat because the pain in this in this kind of lumbar spondylosis is very much severe so while discussing about lumbar spondylosis we have to understand why are this uh, why is this a phenomenon in today's world see lumbar spondylosis was always there from the very beginning but at the same time, the number of cases were not so high. Today, number of spondylosis you can see, no matter what cases you get, you might get a you might get basically additional symptoms of either lumbar spondylosis or cervical spondylosis. For this, the major reason is our modern lifestyle. So. In modern lifestyle factors such as sedentary behavior, poor posture, while working, most of us, I, whenever we are working, the, if we are not able to maintain proper posture, it slowly, slowly, slowly wears and tears the basic cervical joints and also affects the lumbar joints in a long standing. Also, obesity is one of the major issues which is causing this uh, means causing degenerative disc changes, which is causing more stress on vertebral joints. And basically, lack of exercise. In today's world, since we most of us would don't have time to exercise, what it does is basically, it, if we are not exercising, all our muscles get older much more quickly. Now, if we think on this, basically it said that if a person who is maybe overweight, but who exercises regularly will be more healthier than a person who has a stable health condition, ha has a stable we uh, weight, but at the same time never exercises. So exercise has got a very major role, which is causing this modern day disease. So the next we will talk about what are the symptoms of lumbar spondylosis? I don't think this uh, slide is very much necessary. It's basically lower back pain, stiffness of the back, numbness and tingling sensation of the legs might be an additional symptom and difficulty in, in walking or standing for extended period of time is the major symptoms in this kind of cases. So nothing to discuss further in, in this one. We will, sorry. we will uh, move ahead so uh, what in lumbar spondylosis what are the typical treatment approach 
in modern medicine the typical treatment approach for lumbar spondylosis basically includes a combination of pain management techniques physical therapy exercise and in severe cases surgical intervention basically uh, physical therapy and exercise is not part of modern medicine it's a general management but in today's uh, era it's considered to be a part of modern medicine and not something else but in homeopathy also we always encourage for physical therapy and exercise with medicines now non surgical treatment options include only medications for pain basically uh, i'm sorry the slides are going a little bit atypical yeah so non surgical uh, treatment options only include medic medication for pain and inflammation and physical therapy is always advised for basically strengthening the muscles surgical options of lumbar spondylosis uh, includes procedures such as laminectomy discectomy spinal fusion or artificial disc replacement aimed at relieving pressure on the affected nerves and st stabilizing the spine so why are why go for homeopathy why not go for surgical procedure and for pain medication because basically we already know that pain medication is going to give you relief only for a certain amount of time and also if you consider if anyone consider surgical intervention basically they have to understand the risk and complications of the treatment basically during surgery they, they it carries many risk of infection and nerve damage which may increase the problems of the patient furthermore getting into the homeopathic treatment as we all are treating uh, lumbar spine spondylosis the first medicine that we can think of would be rastox right there is always history of pain may pain and stiffness lumbosacral region better motion lying on something hard rubbing warm application worse during rest and rainy weather though almost any symptoms of lumbar spondylosis is covered by this drug it gives only relief for a short span of time rastox is like the painkiller of homeopathy so in any case no matter if you don't even if you can't even think of any drug for any junior doctors or intern the first thing we can think of was rastox and even we give rastox to so many patients that is beyond any count the second uh, medicine that we always think of in basically lumbar spondylosis would be rutagravulans back ache better by lying on back this is the most common means most uh, guiding symptoms to give rutagravulans in any kind of back pain any kind of back pain which is better when uh, the patient is lying on their back is or better by lying on hard surface calls for rutagravulans also another medicine in this context would be natremure which should be given constitutionally the next medicine we can think of is again a medicine which has been taught by me uh, taught to me by dr pralash sharma sir in his opd is belispa it is a best in useful for ankylosing spondylosis it is very helpful in railway spine that is back pain after traveling now there might be history of sprain or injury to the back it is the best remedy for old laborers and gardeners which means for people who are carrying a lot of weight or those who are working mostly in bad posture this belispa is again a wonderful drug for those people now in today's world also belispa can be given to even those people who are working in offices basically those who are working in a posture or sitting in a seat for a prolonged time which is in a very bad posture we can also think of belispa also if there is any injury to visceral organs or with this back pain we can think further about belispa in this matter the next medicine we all think about in back pain or lumbar spondylosis would be simisifuga again simisifuga is a very acute drug it is again a very helpful medicine to decrease the pain of the patient it has wide uses in any kind of muscular rheumatism we have 
one great we use it frequently in cervical spondylosis as well pain is cramping in nature basically neurological origin that is pain due to nerve compression wherever they, we can find this we can definitely think of semicefuga spine is very sensitive for pains in lumbar and sacral region and in many cases pain radiates to the thigh so the next medicine we can think of is again a constitutional medicines which is a very good medicine in lumbar spondylosis would be nux bomb very common medicine but less use though in back uh, three main symptoms are on to focus on first back pain with unsatisfactory stool or retention of urine second would be back pain worse touch and must sit up in bed that is a, in order to turn in bed the person has to sit up it's everything is in the book but we we find it in the, our patients very commonly and whenever we are finding it if we give nausea along with us other symptoms like unsatisfactory stool or frequent urging for stool we can definitely get very good results and third the patient may be a chilly or hot or ambithermal in might be of any thermal reaction but desire for covering is a must for nox vomica yeah apart from that we can also find uh, gastric symptoms of nox vomica predominating the patient and the uh, back pain would be a might be a secondary symptom the next medicine we can think of is basically calicarb basically a uh, uh, remedy of tubercular diathesis great exhaustion in the back and stiffness and paralytic feeling in the back where where do we use calicarb more more in female patients basically and basically there is history of injury and in female patients if back pain is more severe during menses we don't need to think about anything else we can definitely go for calicarb and there is again uh, many gastric symptoms associated with cal calicarb we can also go through it to find out uh, give more similarity the next medicine is again a medicine frequently used but less for back pain is asculus hip basically a medicine which we commonly use for any kind of piles uh, Uh, with backache it's also a very good uh, useful remedy for backache as a whole itself even without piles we can think of uh, backache but there should be associated with heart stool or should be associated with maybe piles or hemorrhoids also if you can find this combination you can definitely think of ascular sip we all use ascular sip in many kind of back pains with great regular success the next medicine is very important if we are thinking of back pain basically where there is many organic changes involved is would be plumbum met metallicum there is a very prominent sclerosis of the spinal cord and there is lightning like pains better by pressure and rubbing there is paralysis of the uh, lower extremities and with definitely an obstinate constipation which is closely associated with plumbum group of medicines again if we grew, go to the next medicine it's again a medicine from the plumbum group itself basically it's plumbum iod plumbum iod basically all symptoms of plumbum we have to go along with increased hunger of iodum and all symptoms of uh, pain along with ataxia if we can think of we can definitely go for plumbum iodum and again it's a very good uh, medicines for spinal cord stenosis as well number 10th medicines would be staphysagria i'm sorry the font is might not be clear to you as much but let me just read it out to you uh, wherever there is back pain with history of anesthesia pain in the small back pains in the as if broken in loins sensation as if lifting or straining the back Ba pain in loins aggravated rising up we can think of staphysagria but don't uh, think of all the symptoms basically if you want to give staphysagria to a patient you should always consider the mental symptoms very important as uh, a very important uh, thing we should know that 
uh, those who are working in regularly in offices under stressful condition no matter even under rigorous mental stress also what happens this kind of stress kind accumulates in uh, basically in the cervical region and also in the lower back so staphylococcus is one of the medicines where we can think of about this stress more than the back pain staphylococcus is a very good medicine for stiffness in many uh, joints even in arthritis cases more right sided uh, joints rather if ever there is too much stiffness if there is too much stiffness we can think of staphylococcus one of the major things you need to think about staphylococcus would be uh, if there is any history of suppressed insult or if there is any kind of uh, explosive anger or escapism which is present in the patient the we can definitely think of uh, staphylococcus and again on the uh, basically in whenever we are going with staphylococcus we can definitely follow it with either causticum we can follow it with colocynth or we can follow it with lycopodium as well in lumbar spine spondylosis as well it is very important to note that in no matter any cases we we are seeing constitutional medicine is of very much importance in colocynth also we can find uh, means symptoms of lumbar spondylosis in causticum also which is the next medicine we are going to talk about there are definite many symptoms of uh, lumbar spondylosis which is indicated in stiffness of back and back pain aggravated from rising from sitting position who basically causticum patient are very Uh, generally chilly in character and they have a desire for dampness means dampness always ameliorates and basically they like rainy weather like carcinosin or metorhinum and causticum patients are basically very sympathetic they love pets if we consider the whole scenario of the patient into one place then we can definitely think of causticum we can think of colocin we can think of lycopodium do i have not included lycopodium and causticum sorry lycopodium and colocin in my slides but they can also be used after staphylococcus the next medicine we all know and we have all all used in uh, back pain is macrotin macrotin is uh, this uh, the tincture of this medicine is prepared from the alkaloid of the plant resinoid of simicifuga racemosa so basically its chief sphere of action is again on muscular rheumatism many symptoms of uh, of muscular weakness better by moving about in spite of weakness and pain as if the muscles were bruised is one of the characteristic symptoms of uh, macrotin in uh, it's an excellent female remedy it uh, gives very efficient relief in dysmenorrhea if given in 3x potency all the medicines which i have uh, mentioned before maybe rastox you can think of in lower potency or higher potency uh, owing to the intensity of the symptoms when you are going for staphylococcus and you are basing uh, means giving it on mental picture more you should definitely start with a higher potency or you can start with lm potency as well while going for macrotin it would be very would be very helpful if you start in a very lower potency which is might give a very good relief to the patient the next medicine i'm uh, i don't know if, if the slides are readable or not but i hope you can read it Uh, basically the next medicine would be calcareous flow again that we know basically very commonly used in any kind of bone problems as a whole basically pain in back from strains after riding vehicles that is after jarring tired aching or traveling with restlessness prince uh, okay there was a little bit hiccup it's okay basically a uh, principally is used for bony growths and bony ulcers mostly given as a pain killer in treatment of lumbar spondylosis where osteophytes are uh, prominent 
I have seen many cases of back pain where uh, I have seen Dr. Pralash Sharma sir, I have seen Dr. Sarkar sir giving uh, Calcarea Flow 3x for, uh, in tablets form in order to reduce the pain, which is very helpful in many cases. The next medicine would be a solid constitutional medicine which should not be used without any other than constitutionally in case of lumbar spondylosis would be sulfur now sulfur patient wherever whenever you are thinking you should have a clear constitutional approach before give, prescribing this medicine to your patient basically in any kind of uh, where all symptoms of sulfur indicated and back pain where it is aggravated by standing like valeriana you can think of sulfur but definitely other symptoms should corroborate in order to prescribe this medicine i have given sulfur in many cases but in all cases the, in basically the patient had a constitution of sulfur the next medicine would be like uh, thuja the next medicine is thuja and it's one of my favorite remedies now uh, i know uh, there should not be any favoritism in medicine but when it comes to back pain thuja is definitely my favorite one Thuja is very undermined in back pain in spite of having so many symptoms. Pain from lower back with tenderness of muscles of each side, drawing in sacrum, coccyx and thighs while sitting after a long sitting prevents standing erect. These all these symptoms are very closely associated with Thuja and very close symptoms of lumbar spondylosis. If we go through miasmatic analysis as well in any kind of in uh, lumbar spondylosis also both psychotic and syphilitic miasms are covered in this area. So again Thuja if we go through miasmatic approach as well basically covers a lot of symptoms of lumbar spondylosis. Pain as uh, of a fracture, stiffness, loins and back and nape. Drawing in the back and loins when seated. Basically all uh, symptoms which are uh, aggravated by sitting for a long time if you are corroborating other symptoms of thuja and also if you even consider whenever we are considering about injury to the back also we are always thinking of belly spur hypericum ruta we are thinking of arnica as well but one of the most forgotten remedies in back uh, act means back injury also is thuja in any kind of back injury after which the patient is ane means very difficult for the patient to stand from sitting posture you can definitely think of thuja given other symptoms of thuja corroborating in this kind of cases you can think of thuja as well and basically in my experience what i have understood in many cases of back pain where you uh, means I cannot work my mind uh, anywhere going to any other medicine. I would rather give Thuja. And Thuja has given such good results in my personal experiences as well that it has been my favorite medicine. Uh, sorry for uh, saying so much about Thuja. The next medicine would be definitely Hypericum. Consequence of spinal concussion, as we, as I said just now, spinal injury, back injury, we think of hypericum, we think of arnica, we think of belly spur. Also, we, where there is a sprain, we think of uh, yeah, rustox as well. Again, hypericum is a very good medicine where there is injury or uh, spinal concussion is present. There is violent pains and in inability to wall or stoop after a fall on the coccyx that is coccycodynia that is a main term basically wherever the there is an injury to the coccyx and from uh, basically sitting too forcefully or falling on your coccyx we can think of hypericum the basic uh, symptomatology of hypericum would be the pain goes from down to upwards and Next medicine we can think of is Medorinum. Again, a very useful medicine in backache, but a, uh, it's a constitutional medicine. But in back pain also, even if all symptoms are corroborating towards Medorinum, it should be given very 
very carefully and in moderate power and in very few repetitions this is again i am uh, saying from personal experiences after using medrainum in many cases in men, most uh, cases if there was if when i have prescribed medrainum in lm potency also i have got aggravations from in the patient which after a certain point of time did subside and did give a very useful effect uh, result to the patient but as a whole giving it in moderate doses like 200 or 1 m one or two doses has given much benefit to the patient so basically whenever you are going through giving medrainum be careful of this thing the symptomatology are all mostly common now basically of lumbar spondylosis the main thing you need to remember about medorinum it would be there is increased thirst second there would be burning of extremities or uh, once the means uh, the person cannot keep their feet covered they will want it to be open outside of the covers okay so uh, and with frequent utis with increased thirst as i said and uh, a medorinum also has a desire for rainy weather just like causticum and carcinosin the next medicine would be a very uh, less used medicines which i have learned from dr prala sharma sir again would be visica malva in lower back pain basically lower back pain with sciatica syndrome pain radiating uh, either towards right or left side of the leg lumbosacral radiculopathy myelopathy is diagnosis for for this a caseo hypertension pain may also extend to lumbosacral region pain may also alternate with elbow pain and constipation may also be present lower potency i have used for visicum album with again basically if there is hypertension present in the patient or if there is a ckd patients also with hypertension we can again with this back pain and constipation we can definitely think of uh, visica malva another very important symptom of visica malva would be basically proteinuria wherever there is protein leakage along with hypertension you can definitely think of visica malva the next medicine is basically is like a uh, uh, whenever this this medicine should be given to all those patients who are coming to us after getting a lot of treatments from modern medicine after taking too many analgesics and painkillers and that would medicine would be salicylic acid this is a shift medicine from conventional analgesics to homeopathy where gi system is involved because of taking analgesics for a long period of time and taking care of pain in joints which is in shifting nature there can be a loose stool following intake of analgesics means basically after taking uh, painkillers if the patient is having loose stools along with that he is tired of taking painkillers and when when he is coming to you you can definitely start the patient with uh, salicylic acid if the patient again Uh, has come after taking too many paracetamols we can think of natrum salicylicum as well the next medicine again this medicine uh, is very much useful and has been uh, i wouldn't be speaking about it if uh, dr uh, pralesa wouldn't introduce me to this medicine i have used it after any web analgesics or painkiller has been used but definitely didn't know that it had a sphere of action for decreasing the joint pains as well after using it i have got results which are very striking the next uh, medicine would be valeriana officinalis uh, this is again a very uh, common medicine for back pain which is aggravated by standing or stretching like thuja and ameliorated by walking like rustox and if in any kind of cases of lumbar spondylosis high potency is very much indicated there is joint pains in the loins and back back pain in the region of the loins as from a chill or a strain lancinations in left lumbar region above hip worse when standing and especially when sitting then than then walking this is again a very a good symptom of valeriana 
After this medicines, the, we have covered most of the common medicines which we use in uh, uh, lumbar spondylosis. I would like to go through two more medicines, two or three more medicines, which are a little bit rare in nature, but are very useful in lumbar spondylosis. So in that medicine, in that context, I would first talk about Gettysburg water. Gettysburg water is a great medicine for stiffness and joints, both extremities and also vertebra. It can be used in intercurrent along with any constitutional medicine. Gettysburg water, if whenever you use it intercurrently with any other medicine, gives a very good effect in decreasing the stiffness of the joint. Maybe may it be arthritis, may it be any lumbar spondylosis as well or cervical spondylosis as well. The next medicine, I can't give you much materia medica, but definitely polygonal multifluoretum is one of the medicines you should get in your clinic. It's a rare medicine and not easily available in most shops or uh, most companies as well. But it is a very useful medicine in spondylolisthesis. And in this, basically, there is extreme back pain. Wherever this, there is extreme back pain, it might be caused due to uh, maybe in cancers also, which where, wherever there is vertebral metastasis or even uh, there is tumor in the spine also. In those cases also, when there is too much amount of pain, you can definitely think of polygonal multifluoretum. This again, a medicine which has been taught by Dr. Pralash, sir. And I'm very thankful for uh, taking, giving means uh, getting to know this medicine because this medicine has helped so many patients who were actually not able to walk without support. And now they are able to not just walk, but even do cycling. Today, I'm not presenting so many cases, basically uh, lump, uh, lower back pain or lumbar spondylosis cases is so common. Basically, every one of us have having at least 50 or hundreds and senior physicians might be even counting in thousands of cases of lumbar spondylosis. And definitely everyone has a very good result in lumbar spondylosis. It's very uh, one of the major scopes for homeopathy. But in uh, uh, respect to everything which I have said, mm -hmm. along with medications, one of the main things mm -hmm. I would like to suggest would be to advise your patients about physical therapy and exercise as well. Most of the patients who do this uh, physical therapy and do exercises or do yoga along with the medication have so much better scope in getting relief of the symptoms even very uh, at very early point of uh, stage of uh, their treatment itself and uh, basically homeopathy is uh, works so good and also in autoimmune diseases like ankylosing spondylosis which i will share one single report of a patient after like four years of treatment who was hlab 27 positive has become right now become neutral uh, before sharing that, I will talk about cartilago. Basically, again, a rare medicine which is uh, for improving the health of cartilages and tendons. It should be used intercurrently and in low potency. So, before in ending this, I would like to just just give me a second. Okay. Screen sharing is not supported. Uh, uh, I'm not able to share my screen for this, but uh, uh, I'm just describing the case to you right now because there might be some technical issues. I'm not able to share the screen. Uh, there is, uh, I got two cases of ankylosing spondylosis which are doing so well. One of them is a 37 year old female with uh, ankylosing spondylosis along with other uh, means comorbid, uh, basically along with developed uveitis and also suffering from basically uh, infert, primary infertility. On examination, basically, uh, she had a very low AMH level, 
and she had severe back pain and also back pain radiating to her thighs after means treatment for four years um, most of her complaints were on and off basis was always better with medicine and after some gap of medicine it used to come back a little bit but after four years of treatment from 2019 to 2023 continuously uh, the patient after uh, going through this hlab 27 test now has become neutral so this is very much possible with homeopathy and second case would be a, a young uh, boy or uh, basically 17 years old with ankylosing spondylitis basically with too much stiffness in his back wasn't able to move along with scoliosis was also there towards the left side in this case also after continuous treatment for three or four years the all the stiffness and back pain everything has subsided the scoliosis also has become better but i won't take credit for that because he had uh, his spine adjusted by a chiropractor and basically physical therapy and exercise this has helped him a lot so in cases of even ankylosing spondylosis homeopathy has given very good relief to many patients and i may be i am a very young uh, in this profession and i most of the senior practitioners most of my teachers would agree with me on this that uh, in ankylosing spondylosis also we have got excellent results only two things we need to always three things we always need to stick in mind one is medicine a should be always given on a constitutional base, basis intercurrent of medicines need to be given and sometimes in order to reduce the pain of the patient or stiffness of the patient something some medicines need to be prescribed to the patient maybe on a on the side basis or maybe on sos basis and thirdly exercise and physical therapy is a must for any kind of lumbar spondylosis or cervical spondylosis so that not only the symptoms and the disease subsides but also there are no recurrences we can always advise patient for a healthier lifestyle but as we all know ki, uh, that is not so much possible so with this i would like to end my session and i would thank you all for being so patient with me and uh, i hope uh, this was uh, uh, my session has been informative and is helpful to the younger generations thank you over to you orko Thank you. Many, many thanks to all for joining me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyway, happy holiday to all of you. Those who are not seen out of the way. Really, all good. These are thanks. For nice presentation, especially regarding mathematics and other symptoms management, etc. Excellent here, Dr. Chris. Just two things I want to add. He has covered all the sides, starting from the cause, symptomatology, investigations, treatment in details, made very details, including consumption drug, palliatives, rare medicines, all the corners. Only two things I want to focus, as all was telling, that for the beginners, regarding all, I want to tell you one more thing. NIH Alumni Association has one emergency fault line. Dr. Orgo Chatterjee is one of them, obviously. Any emergency, he will be first to come forward. So we are really thank to Orgo for his endeavor. So regarding his speech, I want to just tell you one thing that he was taking, he was telling with, with Dave that for the beginners, they should not forget about rosters. I am also with the same opinion that as a beginner, if you want to give immediate medicine, you should not forget, not that you are by forgetting all other medicines, but you give rosters 
especially LBP, low back pain will relieve to some extent, obviously. The reason behind is, pathophysiology is, first pain, low back pain, it is initiated by the muscles and ligaments. So these are the early signs that muscles and ligaments are under stress. They are crying to keep the vertebral column in proper anatomical position. That means when the normal lordosis of lumbar spine is getting lost, due to the reason I will tell you, then they start crying. They are facing strain. So to, to reduce the strain and cry of the ligaments and muscles, Raspers is a very common, very useful. Obviously, this drug you will be able to give confidence to the new patient, especially for the newcomers. Another thing I am very happy to learn from him that he has given much emphasis on Thuja especially. You will be astonished to know, I am very happy. My teacher, Dr. S.K. Dube, in Calcutta Homeopathy College, he was gold medalist in anatomy. But whenever we are under problem, he used to come to teach mathematical. From third year onwards, he left anatomy and joined in mathematical department. He taught us Thuja for about three months. Apparently, it seems to be unbelievable, but it is fact that our teacher, by demonstrating different postures, started from the fixed idea to everything. He is going on teaching, teaching, teaching with comparison with other drugs. Such a serious, such depthful drug Thuja is. So Thuja seems to be a herbal product, but the depth of the two is unbelievable. Anyway, one more thing I want to add to our brilliant presentation of the day that this lumbar spondylitis is a disease which we invite. It doesn't come automatically or accidentally. We invite. How? I, I just like to give one example. When British came to India for business, they were our guests. We gave good nourishment, good blessings, all sort of health. As Indian people are traditionally trained to help others. But what happens ultimately? Due to ignorance, we were not aware of the British culture, their tendencies. Our nourishment, our caring to the foreign people's guests become ultimately our trouble and pain at the cost of many lives we had to regain our independence. Likewise, spondylitis disease, due to ignorance, we invite, starting from the very poor people who is carrying materials on head, who are day laborers in the field, pedophiles, who are practicing medical practice, who are engineers, any, every corner, no one is expected, accepted to invite spondylitis due to ignorance only. The basic cause of lumbar spondylitis is unused, disused, or overused. These three are the only factors. That means sometimes we do not use our lumbar spine properly. Lumbar spine, physioanatomically, they are having frontal, the frontal movement, ventral movement, posterior movement dorsal ventral, to the lateral, to the right, to the left, and rotations. Many of the persons, due to our ignorance, we forget this type of motion should be maintained through and through. Thousands and thousands, rather lakhs and lakhs times we are bending forward to perform our jobs, duties, but very rarely we bend back. More rarely we bend, we bend to right or left side. Incidentally, we rotate our spine, but proper normal anatomical movement or physiological movements is not being maintained normally due to ignorance of our spine and anatomical physiology. This is unused. Now, what is overused? We are doing the same thing. Medical profession, hours after hours, hours together, by keeping a very nice chamber with a revolving soft chair. Hours together, we are sitting and seeing patients by losing our normal rotations of the lumbar spine. We forget that we have to sit straight 
and sitting straight on soft bed is impossible. So days together, months together, gradually, gradually we are losing our normal anatomical position of our lumbar vertebra due to soft seat, soft bed, soft sofa, etc. Means modern means of comforts. Moreover, what we do that this overstrain. Some people are working in the field or some people are working in the market. They are carrying high heavy weights on head days together, months together, years together to perform their profession or to maintain their lives, forgetting that spine should have normal movements other than this carrying weights. And majority of the weight ultimately goes to lumbar spine. It is hence it is called a weight behind joint. Very sensitive to weight. The more you grow as or was telling, the more you grow older. Our ligaments as the metabolism become weak, ligaments, muscles become weak. So the weight we are carrying before in our early stages due to high tonicity of the muscles, strength of the ligaments is not possible in later life. But we do not care. Ignoring all those inevitabilities, difficulties, we go on continuing these trends, carrying things on the head, carrying weights on the hands, sitting in soft bedded, soft bed and sits for days together, years together, gradually this overuse causes lumbar spondylitis. Next is disuse. Abnormal use of the lumbar spine in any posture, in any profession, in any manner. If there is some abnormal movements of the lumbar spine due to any reason, ultimately lumbar spine will get affected. First, muscles will be under strain because muscles and ligaments are responsible to keep the vertebral column in normal anatomical position. Normal lotus is being maintained. First, they will be affected. Intermittently, there will be low pain, low back pain. And what you do is that we ignore by giving some warm application, by taking this and drug, by taking few doses of rastro or macpot, we ignore. It comes, goes, comes and goes. But gradually, gradually, if this pain in low back is continued intermittently, we must be very, very careful. One exercise should be done immediately because recurrence of low back pain is a definite indication of our misconduct. What happens is very when patient comes to us to homeopath, it is too late. That means he has ignored the pain of muscle strain. He has he or she has ignored the ligament strain. Gradually, gradually, by taking some palliative medicines, either by homeopathy or by allopathy, he was maintaining, he or she was maintaining his lifestyle. But ultimately, patient has come to us in a serious condition. What is that? Tingling of the limbs, fingers, thumb like uns rather unconscious feeling on the soles, weakness of the limbs, tremendous pain in sciatic nerve, means pain in the posterior aspect of the thigh and that radius up to the hill. When this type of complaints come to us, when the treatment is not properly done or not being properly taken, ultimately they come to homeopathy to get relief of it when it is too, too late. That is why when we get patients, we must be very cautious that the disease has progressed a lot. Only X is not at all sufficient. How to get confirmed? What type of test should be done for the cases who are coming later or wasting time? We must ask the patient to assess which area you are giving the stingling sensation, what type of sensation you are getting in the soles, which finger is getting more tingling, and what type of pain you are facing. Then ultimately, if we find the limbs has been affected, that means the not supplying those muscles are under compression or under distress. So the intervertebral disc, as all was telling, the cyclical sac, that means the opening sac through which the spinal nerves comes out from the spinal cord, crossing the vertebra, our face should go to that. At that time, CT scan is a must to see the thicker set, the intervarticular space, the disc to some extent. And if you find the complaints are very serious, 
he is not able to move or sparking pain especially there is two type of testing in our system in our medicine that you ask the patient to stand to sit erect in a hard tool or hard chair ask the patient to cough hardly and if the coughing gives a sharp stabbing like pain in the low back in a particular point take it for granted there is some serious pathology already has been taken in lumbar vertebrae next sign is it is called root pain second is gargle pain ask the patient to sit erect on a hard basement means chair or tool ask the patient to cough loudly if that cough, coughing gives a sharp like electrical pain from lumbar area to abdomen umbilical area in a circular manner take it for granted the changes in the spine pathology is very serious it is called gargle pain so these two signs should be observed usually when we get patients with in delayed stage patient is complaining low back pain or other complaints for years together under treatment but not getting any or getting any again it is relapsing and relapsing and relapsing so this ct scan mri should not be ignored when patient comes to us with a complaints of low back pain or complaints with extremity lower extremity for a longer period they will be able to assess each tissue what are the changes accordingly we have to decide if we find that pathology is less sensitivity is high we should accordingly think to palliate or to treat that the sensitivity is very high highly sensitive there are many drugs starting from hypericum to many things but if you find pathology is very serious but sensitivity is very poor nervous sensation tingling pains are very less but pathology is grave there is some stipulated disease we should be alert to treat the patient sorry so accordingly we have to be first confirm that what state of complaint patient is then what we should do once we get sure that there is some serious changes mri staining or some moderately high risk factor ct scan staining or only existing certain changes of the lordosity or vertebral osteophytes etc accordingly we decide the depth of the disease along with the period of suffering and intensity of the suffering then what we, we should do that is my experience we should take a blindly detailed case testing completely forgetting what we have seen in the mri ct scan etc how long he is suffering whatever it is a detailed case ct completely without any preconceived idea regarding spinal disease whatever may be the disease we take a case ct in detail starting from the patient complaint covering all the points then we should do to frame out the case that what drug is the patient our teacher is to tell that you must learn to call a person by names of the drug dr bindu mukherjee was very well aware he was he was they were organizing drug drama recently few years back when i was called to nih one program students perform drug dump that is we should call the patient as a drug the patient is coming to a chamber is not a patient of spinal disease a patient of neck surgery this patient is a patient of puja not of lumbar spinal disease whatever may be his complaint so that type of attitude is must develop and our it is tell with your classmates your friends your family member everyone you try to know as a drug not by name only they know you be successful what is your what your father is whether he is lycopodia or suja what your mother is what your sister is who is your brother who is your friend patina sipia likewise we must learn to identify or name persons by drugs of metamedica that will increase our knowledge and give us strength now after taking the case history first of all we must select the drug for the patient say for example by getting whole history we found the patient is of nectrum salt now we are sure to get sure is he completely nectrum salt there is no other drugs even after cross query what i do usually and i have learned from my teachers 
ask one or two direct mental symptom to the patient which was not being disclosed by the patient. If they say yes, you be confirmed that your death from salt drug is 100% sure. This should be the confirmation of any selected drug after repertorization. Because we have learned that after repertorization, you consult Metamedica, obviously, we'll do it. But to for further confirmation, ask direct one or two mental symptoms which are not been disclosed that will further confirm your conclusion. Keep a note of it that this patient will be cured by Metam salt only. The rest of the drugs are only assisting the complaint. There are different situations. As a beginner, we were talking about that to some extent, palliation should be done in the early stage. But be careful before doing the case history and before confirming the patient as a drug. If we start palliating, the symptoms will peripherally be cut off. Ultimately, we will never be able to come back to that drug because many symptoms have gone off through palliation. That is a dangerous pattern. Everyone should be very cautious that we should not cut off the hands and limbs of the case. To identify all the branches, trees, and flowers should be kept as it is. Take the totality, get the drug, the drug, then you do whatever management you want as per your situation. There are many, many drugs in homeopathy for palliation, but the drug will ultimately cure. Probably I told you in one CME that I have tested in NITOPD that many drugs were tried on symptomatology. None of the case got radiological improvement. Symptomatic improvement, 99% cases got improvement, and all of you have experience. But radiological improvement, which it is cure, the spine will become normal from abnormal is really cure. To do this thing, the constitutional drugs only helpful. All tests were done simply by constitutional drug, simply by palliative drug, by constitution and palliative. Separate, separate data are there. So you must be very cautious to know the patient as the drug, then go on palliative. Now, regarding physiotherapy, there are some problems what I have experienced. There are persons coming to us, they were continuing physiotherapy. What I have seen, that once I asked him stop exercise for seven days, giving placebo, patient having silent feeling better. Then by seeing many drugs, many patients, I concluded that the exercise advice to him was over exercise. That means then that of giving his relief, continuous persistent strain, persistent trauma is being given being given to the lumbar spine. That is why I to assess this depth of the disease, pathology, by which able to assess what type of physiotherapy, how long, to what exercise should be done. What I do usually, I ask the patient to consult physiotherapy, but I ask them, do not continue as per 100% of their duration. What they usually do, this sort of exercise you should do for 10 times. This posture should be maintained for two minutes. This exercise for 20 times, twice a day. What I tell to the patient, and you should experience this one by your trials, that the so long you will feel comfort, continue exercise. The moment you feel trace, uncomfort, stop it. Whether it is one time, two times, or 20 times. Means your body will tell you how much physical therapy, how much physical medicine you need. That 100% varies from person to person, pathology to pathology. But in the literature, it is given as conventional medicinal system, a routine prescription. That should be avoided many times have been simply by stopping exercise for a few days, then by starting slowly to his tolerable extent has given maximum relief. Along with that, we must be very cautious due to age factor. We must be very careful that whether parathyroid bulk hormones are normal or not, whether other parameters of the system, that means Vitamin D, lipid profile, proteins, they are normal or not. Many times we have seen, especially from the poor patient, that due to hypoproteinemia, due to hypocalcemia, the joints are getting affected. For the same reason, joints are becoming osteoporic, friable, giving multiphasic complex of lumbar spine. So along with this thing, CME, uh, sorry, along with the observing MRI and CT scan X-ray, we must see the vitamin D level. We must assess whether parathormone is insufficient or not. 
we must assess how much protein is consuming or its body weight should be conserved. There is one BMI, body metabolic BM, not BMI, BMI, body metabolic index, means height comparison to weight. That BMI should be observed to treat this lumbar spondylitis cases. That means whether metabolic system is ready to fill up the gaps of calcification or bone structure, that should be observed. Now, finally, what I was telling that we should be, especially doctors, we should be very careful regarding ourselves first, then our family members, then relatives, then other patients too, that we should not disuse, unuse, or overuse our number spine. And we should maintain, as all was telling beautifully, to prevent the disease. One disease starts, there are hundreds of hazards. Go on physiotherapy, embarrassing activity. Go on taking regular medicine, embarrassing. Go to the shop and purchase, embarrassing. Take milk or calcium fat, embarrassing. All sorts of things are embarrassing. And many hours, they will lumbar spontaneous be consumed. But in a very short period, if you exercise for five minutes, keeping in mind that spines and other joints should move normal posture in all the days and at least for once in a day, for a few minutes only, the rest of the life, especially when you'll be tired of age, of multifarious constraints, at that time you'll be free from your lumbar spondylitis. Anyway, fantastic seminar today. Everyone will be helped by medicines, system of disease and prevention. Now whole world is chasing now toward nowadays world world is thinking to prevent it before starting the disease. We must keep our shoulders, we must join with that we should start start preventing the disease, especially lumbar spondylitis. Anyway, thank you very much to all of the Especially thanks to Orgo Chatterjee for giving brilliant presentation with a very, very short period as emergency service, I will tell you. And many thanks to Pradesh Sharma, another of our forefront emergency volunteer. Excellent. Vidud Mukherjee, his son Orko Mukherjee, and to all of you who are viewing, and we'll see you on that road. Thank you very much. Vidud, please. One more thing, excuse me, I just cannot forget to use it. Nowadays, you will find number of mothers are coming with low back pain with a history of caesarean by LP, lumbar puncture. It is a very critical case for other system of medicine. Very troublesome for mothers. They have to carry their children, perform their home activities, plus this low back pain, which is which is a must. Lumbar spine is a must to carry the boys, the child. In that case, our treatment is very, very simple. As Orgo was telling, do not forget about statistics here. I can add one thing. It is given in the Mathematica. We should never forget that functional injury by ladum. So once you try with ladum to get rid of the low back pain of mother with scissor and section or lumbar function. So anyway, in due course of time, we will invite others, those who are having experience regarding lumbar spondylitis, please come forward to share your experiences. Thank you very much. Be the three. Your voice is not clear, Bidu. There is some problem, I think. It will be best if Dr. Bidu Mukherjee, please uh, remove your headphones. And that may be one of the. Uh, I think I am audible now. Yes. You are clearly audible now. Am I audible? You are audible. You are clearly audible. Come on. Am I audible? You are audible. Just you're show your hand audible. sign to him. Just uh, show your hand sign to him. Uh, from our yes, sir. Audible, slide, audible. Which had been sent to uh, Dr. Orgo. Uh, Dr. Orgo, can you uh, please take up the questions and answer them? Also yes, I would start from uh, the... Kalyani, yes. Sir, on his uh, WhatsApp. Now it's on the screen. Over to you, Dr. Orgo. Yes, sir. I would like to start with, uh, with uh, thanking Dr. Kalyani, sir, okay, for, his, uh, for his insight into the whole thing. As I did not discuss any kind of laboratory investigations, which is Again, a very common thing for homeopaths, but definitely I don't do uh, do give 
all kinds of laboratory investigations which are necessary for any spondyl lumbar spondylosis case especially vitamin d3 levels as sir suggested and also with that i definitely suggest x-ray and go for a ct scan as well for any kind of lumbar spondylosis cases so definitely diagnosis is very important in this factor and also uh, taking into consideration the other factors which can con mean which can contribute into this disease we should always consider and we should get it tested for the patient as early as possible so proceeding with the uh, questions i will go from the uh, first question which is from dr gorang uh, bhaiya and uh, thank you for listening to the uh, whole video uh, uh, as you uh, have said ki three things special qualities that i have learned from dr sarkar sir three very important qualities in clinic which i have learned from dr sarkar sir is one whenever uh, tackling any kind of serious pathology forget about the pathology and more focus on the patient in hand if you if basically if you can find the causation for the whole uh, pathology in way uh, which has occurred in the patient and if you can find the symptomatology and the drug which is corresponding to the patient as a whole then you don't need to think of the sphere of action of the medicine and i have sir has sir has sir has given me the opportunity and exposure to try and experiment in this kind of scenarios where i have used certain drugs without even knowing the scope or sphere of action of those drugs at particular moments the second of thing uh, sir said uh, sir's golden words i would say would be to always keep in mind that uh, in any kind of patient as uh, dr kalyani also, also said that in just for palliation you should not lose the case so definitely in uh, those places intercurrent medicines uh, is a must and definitely many of the uh, medicines which i said like even if we go for rastox say gettysburg water say polygonum multiploetum if we use intercurrently with the constitutional medicines we can definitely give it a go and thirdly uh, as uh, even sir does also we also try to do the same thing it's a uh, simple uh, fact that uh, addressing your patient by the medicine you have prescribed to them is a wonderful way of knowing the whole case as a whole so these are the main three things i would like to share from uh, with dr sarkar sir the second question was about uh you why brainia i have not mentioned brainia basically in any kind of acute cases where there is to means any kind of motion is creating difficulty for the patient i have given brainia in high potency which has given very good results but as a whole brainia the the uh, time of action of brainia is very small for which basically it i have not mentioned it in the video the third question would was about badiaga and uh, about badiaga in this lower back pain any kind of uh, in back pain where there is aggravation from ascending or descending stairs in those cases also badiaga can be considered badiaga is again like gettysburg water all the spring waters basically are very good medicines for stiffness also so badiaga is again a very good medicine for stiffness especially though of the knee joints and the main symptomatology is basic innovation just give me one second okay sorry for that uh, so basically am i audible you are audible you are audible so, uh, so basically uh, in that respect i would uh, to suggest that badiaga again being a very good medicine for stiffness but it is generally more used not it on a personal note on in back pain but in certain back pains where there was ascent means pain aggravated ascending stairs this medicine has also given much help any any other questions which we need, i need to answer i think i have answered the questions 
Dr. Mbiddin Mukherjee, sir, over to you. Right, these are the questions which came forward. And uh, we like uh, a major. There is another question from Atharva Ji. What are the major indications of formica rufa in lumbar pathogenesis? Uh, Dr. Atharva, I personally am telling this to you that I have not used formica rufa in cases of lumbar spondylosis yet but as you have suggested i will definitely study it up and i will try to use if there is any indications so i have got no answer maybe dr kalyani sir would be the better person to answer you this Over to any you, other question sir no further questions over here uh, Kalyani sir, uh, do you want to answer the question? Usually, formica rufa is bryonia except one or two symptoms like relief by heart pressure and highly constipated. All the indications okay. of bryonia except these symptoms are very common in formica rufa. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and we'll not take any further questions tonight because we are already one or 21 minutes uh, live on this session. And we like to thank Dr. Pralai Sharma, in spite of uh, his busy schedule, uh, and Dr. Argo, only he got 36 hours notice uh, to continue with this CME as a speaker. Uh, I'll request whoever is uh, going to see this CME tonight, that is 90th CME, as well as will be observing it in the later stage. Please don't hesitate to come forward. If you are an alumni, alumnus of NIH, don't hesitate to come forward as a speaker. Share your cases. We are getting a lot of, uh, lot of suggestions in our uh, social media groups that this can be done and that can be done. But our earliest request as a uh, alumni association you know, secretary and alumni association administrative officers over here, uh, please come forward. Share your cases. Like today, you saw our beloved uh, Dr. Alga Ch Chatterjee to share his views, whatever he saw, whatever he had observed in his brief uh, clinical experience and expertise. Though his, I'm saying it's brief, but uh, the knowledge he had gathered from last several years, sitting with the stalwarts, sitting with uh, Dr. Sarka, Dr. Uh, Pralaya uh, Sharma and also in the NHOPD during his uh, student days. So, but this is what uh, this uh, doctors of NIH uh, uh, can help and benefit the society at large. I think our beloved Kalyani sir will agree with my views. And uh, moreover, wow. One more thing I, I want to add that always all of us should remember the power, knowledge is power. At this age, being out of NI campus, if we want to increase our knowledge, the only way to go through the books and the experiences for others is that what we are doing in the CME. This is the way to strengthen ourselves, to become more stronger and stronger day by day, to keep homeopathy in front line. If homeopathy grows, we will grow. If we do not exactly, sir. by hesitating, we are doing our own harms. We are creeping ourselves. So please come forward and share your experience, whatever it is, whatever it is or be. Please come forward. We do please. Many of us are might be hesitating that we are having only one experience. Why should I go? See, brother, your one experience can help thousands of homeopaths, hundreds of alumnus. So please do not hesitate to come your whatever little experience is here. And it is not believable of anybody that you don't have any experience. Please come forward. Thank you very much. Bidu. I think just hold on a minute. Uh, just hold on a minute. There are some network issues. Okay, okay. we are waiting. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, 
Uh, with this, uh, we like to announce our next uh, CME topic. Uh, this has been suggested by our respected Kalyani sir. We'll be having our next CME, that is 91st CME on 14th of April, post Hanuman's birthday. And it, we intend it to be a panel discussion or sharing of views, whoever wants to share their views and clinical experience. Post post COVID vaccination, whatever we are observing in our clinics. I think uh, everybody is seeing one or two patients or more, n number of patients. There might be some common symptomatology having post COVID vaccination. We are not saying it post COVID vaccination syndrome, but it's a post COVID vaccination uh, observation from the homeopaths at large. So it's my humble uh, call to all the alumnus, all the alumni across uh, the country and globe to come forward, uh, give your consent, share your experiences, and whatever observations you had done post-COVID vaccination on your patients. And we'll be having that as a panel discussion or at an experience sharing session on 91st CME. 14th of April. And with your permission, sir, we are returning to our backstage editor, Orko. Yes. Sir. Sure. Good night to all of you. Have a nice holiday. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's CME. And if you have enjoyed, do make sure to give it a like, share it with your fellow batchmates the alumnus and also fellow colleagues all around you so we will be waiting a few more days like there's this countdown for the 100th cme like the century and one we had our half century and one now we will be having the century and one like in the may, mid or something like at the end of this year so this year is too special for us and we are thinking of something the it team are thinking of something for the viewers and it will be a big surprise on the 100 cme and we are trying to uh, do that as soon as possible and we'll we will give you a hint of it and about the other it technical stuffs which had been delayed due to some issues we were facing like for the past two months like many of you know that we were having our exams for which we didn't got time to focus on this it back uh, it things so we are back on track and we will be continuing with the it uh, it stuff we're pretty soon and we will be starting those social media platform thing and also the forum thing and the forms thing and we are thinking of doing a series of past CMEs, like of a cutout, which you will get few of them in a playlist format in our channel. Do make sure to check it out. So with this, you uh, you can go and check our Instagram page, our Facebook page, then also our Twitter handle. Then you can uh, join our WhatsApp channel, Telegram channel. All, are, all the links are given in the description below. Do make sure to check it out. And also give uh, means if you want more and if you want to see more CME like this, please make sure to subscribe our channel. Don't forget to hit the all button bell. So with this, again, thank you and good night to all the viewers. Bye. Now it's 4.30.